Hello and welcome to Command Modern Air and Naval Operations. This is our basic gameplay demo. The objective is to show players how to play the game by basically playing through a scenario and explaining what's going on. Let's start at the start menu. Command has two modes of play. There's game mode and edit mode. Uh, the difference is, is that edit mode allows you to play from multiple sides and view from multiple sides, as well as having access to all the edit functions. Players tend to youth like to play in this mode, especially beginning players, because they're able to basically take a scenario apart and learn how the game works. Uh, we fully suggest you do so. So let's go ahead and start a scenario. So the load scenario dialog appears. Uh, on the left, you'll notice a listing of scenarios and save games. Uh, just so you know, the uh, file extension for a scenario file is .scen. The extension for a save game is .sav. Uh, they're found in the scenarios folder in the command directory. So we'll go ahead and look under scenarios and expand. Uh, this gives us a listing of all the scenarios that came shipped with the game. Uh, we'll pick First Contact 2016. Uh, when we do so on the right, uh, you'll notice the scenario description appears along with difficulty and complexity. Uh, these are all, all created in the editor, so the scenario author can uh, write whatever they'd like and set any kind of complexity or difficulty to help a player make a good decision on the scenario they'd like to play. So we'll go ahead and load. When we do so, the select a side dialog appears. Uh, it gives you a drop down. Uh, it lets you view each side's orders and pick the side that you'd like. Uh, in this case, there's Russia and Norway. Uh, we'll pick Russia, and then we'll select the side. Moving forward to the realism settings dialog, uh, you can set what if you'd like detailed fire control or not, or by scenario defaults, we'll pick that. And then apply changes and start. So probably the first thing you want to do is evaluate your own forces. Um, looking on the map, um, obviously, you know, commands a globe, uh, it spins around. Um, you can uh, basically navigate and move the map around by right clicking and the game always centers on where you point. Uh, you can zoom in and out with the mouse wheel. Okay, the other thing to kind of take note of is the data block uh, next to the mouse pointer. Uh, if you noticed over water, it shows uh, latitude and longitude, depth, uh, the thermal layer and uh, the CZ information that's important in anti-submarine warfare, uh, the local time and weather. If you actually push it over land, you'll notice that uh, you'll actually see elevation and slopes. Um, so there's some very useful stuff. Now, if you actually point at a group or a unit and you right click, it'll give you a bunch of different options, um, mission orders that you can do. You can also find them under uh, unit orders. And we also have a large number of hotkeys. If you look at the back of your manual, or actually in this dialogue, it actually shows you the function keys, what those are we have a huge listing of hotkeys. So there's a lot of different ways you can order your units to do stuff in this game and a lot of quick ways to navigate. So why don't we figure out what we have? Um, let's look at our order of battle. You can do that by pressing the O key, which launches the order of battle display. Uh, you'll notice it's uh, they're organized by groups. Uh, what's really kind of cool is that if you select each one, uh, the display will actually center in on it. Uh, you can see the component uh, units under it. Now, what we really want to know is, well, that's great. We know what these are, but what do these units really do? Well, if you look over on the right, you have the unit status display, which gives you some basic information about your units and groups. Um, if you open up group composition, you can actually see what units are in there. And if you select it, it launches the database viewer. Now, this is a pretty valuable tool because it gives you all the information you need to know about that specific platform. And it's pulling right from the database. So in this case, we can see some general data. That's great. But now we get into sensors and weapons and all the stuff that seems to matter. So the other nice thing is you can actually, if you feel like just looking around our databases, you can. If you go into a game and then go to um, database viewer, you can actually search the database. Um, it's filtered by you know uh, platform type. Uh, you can actually filter by class. So you can put a text line in there. So let's say, oh, um, MIG. It'll list all the MIGs in the database. And you can actually filter by country. So let's say you wanted, oh, uh, let's go to Egypt's MIGs. And it'll show, give you a list of them. So some quick things to navigate around. 
Um, a lot of people just actually looking in the database and exploring it. So that's a way you can do that. So other things to kind of take note, um, if you ever wanted to measure a distance in the game, uh, if you hit Control D, it'll actually uh, call the uh, measuring tool. Uh, you just click and then draw a line, and it actually tells you distances and all that. Um, not too useful in this scenario, but if you're trying to figure out a strike or a range, uh, it's a good tool to know. Um, other things you could do is if you just control click on the map, you can define areas and drop reference points. Uh, this is very useful in creating missions. Um, we'll go over that in a second, but um, area missions require you to define their areas by dropping reference points, and that's just a quick way to do it. So let's start actually playing this scenario. So our mission is basically to hunt down some uh, Norwegian vessels and destroy them. Uh, this is a very complex environment. Um, the game is real, so uh, terrain will block um, um, your uh, line of sight. Uh, first things first, let's take a look and see how our, our units are already assigned. It looks like they've already been pre-assigned to missions in the mission editor. Um, we've already created a, a tutorial called uh, plotting and mission editor. If, if you have a chance, check it out because it really goes through this in uh, pretty good detail. And uh, it's an important and good tool to learn because it, the mission editor basically gives you um, a bunch of pre-programmed routines that you can assign units to. Uh, in a small scenario like this, you probably don't because it's you probably want to be more involved in the action. But when you have a huge, massive scenario, um, it, it's actually very useful because it covers a lot of repetitive tasks. So we're going to go ahead and, and delete these missions. And then we're going to create some new tasks for our units. So there's kind of two ways to navigate in a game. You can create plot of courses. Okay, and that's simply uh, pressing F3, drawing out the course, and pressing F3 again. Um, if you actually want to look and see what, what altitude and speed your units are moving, press the F2 key. Uh, it evokes the throttle and altitude dialog. Um, you can change them by actually using the sliding scales. Um, if this was an aircraft, you could modify that. You could also use some presets um, that are in the database uh, to control how fast the units are moving. Another useful thing is to actually look at the emission control, so MCOM status. So you can press the sensors button. Uh, you can turn all the sensors on. Okay, when you do that, you notice all these range rings suddenly appeared. Um, range rings are just visual cues to see um, how far sensors can see. So in this case, we have yellow and white rings. Um, White is uh, air sensors, yellow are surface sensors, uh, obviously the red are the weapons ranges. Um, in this case, we have air-to-air -air weapons, which are more pink, and the darker red are the uh, missile ranges. Okay, the other thing you can do is, okay, so right now the, the game is in by default in group view. So, you know, units are grouped, and then when you select them, you can see the component units. But if you want to select each unit individually, press 9 on the keypad. And that breaks the group view up. And you can actually select each unit individually. And then from there, you can actually manage each weapon. If you look over in unit status, you have each individual vessel's information, and you can manage that. So in this case, let's take a look at sensors. So let's say we want to change the sensor status of this. We, we could uncheck it. Um, you could turn on whole groups by selecting the radars. You can turn them all off by selecting them. Uh, sonars, offensive, ECM. Uh, the important thing to know is that active sensors you can turn on and off. Uh, passive sensors such as passive sonars and ESM will always be on. You don't have to turn them on and off. Um, and again, you can turn these on and off by checking these on and off. When you're done, close. Uh, you can look at your weapons really quick. Um, this is just a quick reference to be able to see uh, what weapons you have and what, what loadouts are on those weapons. Uh, let's say you wanted to change uh, to a different cannon round or something. You could do that by selecting a reload priority. Uh, it's a pretty neat little feature. So we'll go back to uh, unit view. Um, if you look at the bottom left, you can see which view you're in. So if you press the 9, you see group. If you press the 9, you see unit. Uh, generally, you want to be uh, into uh, group view, so it's less cluttered. Another neat feature, which is actually if you go to game, and you go to um, uh, map settings, excuse me, and then you go to merge uh, range symbols, you can actually clean up your display. So if you notice before you had two separate rings, 
this will actually merge them together. So, you know, with a couple of missile bows, it's not really a big deal, but if you have like an Aegis warship with tons of sensors, you get a lot of arcs and, and rings that kind of make the display kind of cluttered. It's a way to unclutter them. Uh, it's just a useful uh, tool. So we'll go back and uncheck that. So let's start this scenario. The first thing to notice at the top is you kind of have a data, an uh, information bar. Uh, gives you time of day, local GMT um, to go. Uh, if you go into uh, game and game options, you can turn on some diagnostic stuff. Um, this is not really useful to you, but it's very useful to us. Um, so when you start the game, uh, you start the game by actually pressing the start button. Notice that the AU count and the pulse time appeared. This is useful to us. It lets us know um, AU count is actually a unit count and pulse time is how well the game's running. So up above, you actually have your function. Uh, I just hit the start button, which actually starts the scenario. Uh, you need to hit that. To the left, you have time compression, which lets you set uh, specific time intervals. This is important in a game like this because, um, you know, not every engagement is 50 miles. Um, you might have a, a, an anti-submarine warfare scenario that could go on for days. So you're going to want to, um, you know, increase time and then uh, decrease time as things happen and things don't happen. Uh, the other important thing to note is that um, command actually runs more efficiently at, at higher compression ratings. Usually if you set it to 30 seconds to a minute, um, you'll probably get the get best performance because we change how our calculations are done. So that's a good thing. At one second, every calculation is happening every, every second. As you progress up the scale, it changes at a different rate, which makes the game run a lot better. So let's go ahead and start. All right, so we're noticing some contacts appeared. If you notice on the left, we've got some yellow text. That's our scrolling message. Um, if we wanted to actually move that to a new window, we could. If we go to game, game options, select message log in separate window, it will launch. Um, this is actually really good if you have a second monitor because you can actually put it in there. But you can of course resize it and put it somewhere where it's not in the way. And it gives you all the information, the up-to-date um, text information about what's going on in the game. So we've detected some contacts. Okay, they're yellow, which means unknown, so we don't know what they are. Um, it's probably in our interest to find out. So we'll go ahead, and I think a couple of our units have some helicopters. So if you press the, if the aircraft button, you'll actually see the Air Ops menu. Um, to launch a helicopter, you simply select it and hit Launch Individually. You could launch as a group if you launch both of them. And we'll wait for that helicopter to launch. Um, the advantage in modern combat of, of obviously a helicopter is that it's sensor is higher so you can detect things over the, your horizon becomes larger you can detect things over the horizon um, you know you're limited by the curvature of the earth in front of your sensor the closer you are to the water the harder it is to detect things at a distance so a helicopter is launched uh, we'll go ahead and give it a plot to see what it sees and you know it's, uh, sensors start appearing and more contacts. You notice they are also heading towards my group, which is probably not good. So obviously one of the big objectives of like an anti-surface warfare scenario is, you know, obviously the first detection usually wins, um, mostly because you can, you know, fire in, in mass. So you kind of do kind of, oh, okay. So here's something else I want to show you that's fairly important. Now we have a contact down here that's been detected, but if you notice, a radar is also pulsing. So what you can do is if you select the contact and you, and you click on contact report, it'll give you a list of units that it, think it is, thinks it is. So that's actually very helpful in trying to figure out if a unknown contact is a hostile. So in this case, it's most likely a, you know, an Norwegian helicopter, because um, obviously no German or Belgian helicopter would be up here, definitely not Australian. Uh, so it's just a neat little tool that Command has. Uh, the other thing you notice is contacts get closer. Um, command begins to break down what exactly they are. So you'll notice that some things become a, uh, you know, you'll notice that, let's see if I can, so a skunk is unknown. We'll see if anything starts to resolve a little better. So now we know what it is. So the game has made a contact. It's marked it as hostile because it knows it's Norwegian. Okay, so red is hostile, 
Orange is unfriendly. Uh, green is neutral. Yellow is unknown in terms of your icon colors. So some other things to note, uh, if you actually look at, at under, you see a cav uh, under a unit icon. That's telling that you're cavitating. So it's not really important in terms of a surface engagement, but with submarines, if you're cavitating, you're making a lot of noise. So it's just a visual indicator that you're, uh, you're running very loudly. Okay, so notice how, in this case, you have a broken sensor line. Uh, what that's telling you is Command actually has the ability to show you like what, it, what theoretically it thinks the sensor range is. Uh, again, this helps you make decisions. So odds are that helicopter probably does detect us. So we'll go ahead and increase time. Um, the other thing I noticed, like, let's say I wanted to record this and figure out what I'm doing and, you know, what, if I hit the record button, it actually launches the game's in-game recorder. Um, the files are huge, but this is actually a great tool, um, because it allows you to record a scenario and then pick up from any point and view from any point. So you can really learn a lot about the decisions you make, or the right or the wrong. Um, you could pick up and say, well, what if I did this? You can do that using this tool. So it's a good little thing, especially if you're learning the game to kind of figure out the what ifs. So let's increase time and see if we can uh, get some action going here. Uh, more units are being, if you notice, the message log is continuing to roll. Um, you could actually save the message log. If you go to game and you go to message log, if you click print to file, it writes it to the log folder in your command directory. So you can actually review that later to see all the different calculations. Uh, it's really useful when figuring out what happened in terms of weapons and decoys and things like that. So we'll go ahead and increase time again. Let's decrease our altitude. All right, so we have a contact that's positively identified as a hostile. So, and it looks like it is a Scold class missile boat. And that is definitely in range if we look, it has uh, missiles, but it also has a little bit of a SAM capability with uh, so Mistral missile. So my helicopter is probably in a little bit of trouble. So let's go ahead and order an attack. Um, again, we have a, a good tutorial on ordering attacks in command. But to do so right now, we'll go ahead and go to attack options. And we'll do a manual attack. This lets me uh, allocate exactly what I want. Um, as you see, my group has two of these uh, Corvettes in it. My target is the steel. Um, if you look in the suitable weapons column, um, there's red entry and green entries. Uh, green entries, you're able to fire. Red entries are out of a weapons parameter. In this case, we'll go ahead and allocate a couple of saplices to this target. When we do so, it shows up. We'll close, and we'll wait to resolve the attack. So you notice that my helicopter is, if you look under status, it actually tells you what the helicopter is up to. In this case, it's engaged defensive, so the, the missile boats fired a SAM on it, and the, and the helicopter's trying to get away. So this actually tells you what's going on at the time. Uh, in the meantime, my missiles are inbound. Uh, other targets are hostile. So it looks like we're starting to see a pattern. Not good. And our missiles are inbound. We get information on them in the data block. Uh, if you notice a little two, that means two missiles are allocated. Uh, notice that the missile's radar has gone on. So that's pretty neat. It's searching, looking for the target. 
and it's likely acquired it. You'll notice they'll firm up. And then they strike the target. So they've counterfired at us. Uh, we don't really know what it is. Obviously, it's probably an NSM missile. Um, our, your units will automatically fire back. There is a uh, <coughs> rule of engagement you can turn on to prevent that. But for the most part, they will respond. An engagement in a nutshell. Uh, if you'd like to know how you did, press the game and then um, scoring. Um, basically, it's a minor defeat, and it's because I've had haven't destroyed enough. Um, this is all scaled within the scenario editor. If I look at losses and expenditures, it actually shows me on all sides all the lost ships and all the wasted weapons or the not wasted weapons. Uh, it's just good to see how you did. And that's gameplay in a nutshell. Um, hope you enjoy it. Uh, if you have any questions, please do feel free to write on the on our forums. Uh, we're going to be doing a bunch of videos to kind of explain the game. Uh, we will have a bunch to start, but then as um, things kind of shake out on the forums, we'll build more to respond to people's questions. Thank you.